Hello and welcome creative friends and animation enthusiasts. If you're passionate about animation and want to learn how to bring a 3D character from Blender into Cascadeur, you're absolutely in the right place. In this tutorial, we'll go step by step through the process, from preparing your character and setting up a simple rig, all the way to exporting and importing it into Cascadeur. No advanced knowledge is needed. With just a few simple tools and a clear explanation, you'll be able to take your first professional steps into the world of animation. All right, ready to get started? Let's dive in. First, I open the character I previously made in Blender. As you can see before we start rigging, it's important to make sure that the character is clean, organized, and free of errors. Once we've checked everything, we start creating a rig that Cascadeur can recognize. Luckily, Cascadeur doesn't require complex rigs. It only needs a simple structure without extra controllers or constraints. This means we only need bones that are directly connected to the character's mesh, nothing more. Just like what you see in the video. The bones we create should include basic parts such as the root, abdomen, chest, neck, head, jaw, tongue, teeth, eyes, collarbone, shoulders, elbows, hands, fingers, thighs, knees, feet, toes, and twists. Why should we use Cascadeur? Cascadeur offers powerful features that significantly improve workflow and save valuable time. In my opinion, this software is truly exceptional. With its AI-assisted posing, precise physics integration, and a user-friendly interface tailored to animators' needs, Cascadeur provides unique capabilities rarely found in traditional or similar animation software. These features make the animation process faster, more accurate, and physically more realistic. To place these bones accurately, we use the snap feature in Blender. I select the mesh, switch to edit mode, choose a vertex, press Shift plus S, and select Cursor to selected. Then I go to edit mode for the armature, pick the bone, press Shift plus S again, and select Selection to Cursor to snap the bone to that exact point. I always keep my models low poly in Blender, and this is a deliberate and purposeful choice. Working with low poly models gives me a sense of comfort, greater control, and a faster workflow. Low poly models not only have simpler structures, but they also behave much more flexibly during modeling, editing, rigging, and even animation. It's important to make sure that finger bones are aligned correctly along the X and Z axes, as shown in the video. Blender and Cascadeur together make an incredible combo. Blender gives full control over modeling, sculpting, and rigging with artistic freedom. Cascadeur, on the other hand, brings AI-assisted posing, realistic physics, and smooth animation workflows. When you combine both, you get the power of creativity and the precision of physics in one pipeline. It's efficient, intuitive, and perfect for animators who want both speed and quality. After creating the bones, I parent them properly, for example. Shoulders to the collarbone and the collarbone to the chest. Thigh bones are parented to the root, jaw, tongue, teeth, and eyes to the head. This hierarchy ensures that our rig stays clean and easy to control. Once parenting is done, it's time to name each bone. Proper naming helps avoid confusion and allows Blender and Cascadeur to mirror bones correctly. For bones on the left or right side of the body, I add del or r to the end of the name, like hand.l or foot.r. This is very important for symmetry. Next, I go to the armature menu and use the symmetrize option. This automatically creates mirrored bones for the other side of the body. Then I parent the mesh to the armature. Don't forget that after parenting, weight painting is crucial. 
Personally, it's not my favorite part, but hopefully you'll enjoy it more than I do. To save time, I'm doing the weight painting in the background during this video. Weight painting is an essential stage in the character rigging process in Blender. It determines how the mesh deforms in response to each bone's movement and directly impacts the realism and fluidity of the animation. Without properly assigned weights, even a well-constructed rig can result in unnatural or broken deformations. That's why this step should never be overlooked or rushed. A clean, precise weight painting setup ensures smooth, believable motion and is just as critical as modeling, rigging, or texturing in the animation pipeline. That's exactly why I mentioned earlier that the video might become too long if we go through every tiny step in real time. To keep the flow smooth and avoid overwhelming the viewer with repetitive or technical details, I usually perform these background tasks off camera. This way we can stay focused on the main concepts without unnecessary interruptions. Once everything is ready, I select the mesh and the armature in object mode and export the file in FBX format. Make sure to follow the export settings shown in the video, they're very important. Now I open Cascadeur and import the FBX file. The program will ask a few questions, just answer them, and then you'll enter the main workspace. Here we need to match our Blender rig to Cascadeur's structure so we can start animating. Now that we've created our bones in Blender, it's time to bring them into Cascadeur. Here, in the Quick Rigging Tools panel, I carefully assign each bone one by one to the system. This step ensures that Cascadeur recognizes the structure correctly and can interpret the rig accurately for further animation. Taking the time to do this properly is crucial for achieving clean, predictable results in the animation process. Please note, at this stage, we only assign the bones on one side of the character to the program. The other half is left for Cascadeur to automatically mirror. In the final step, we define the naming suffixes used in Blender, such as underscore L and underscore R, or period L and period R, so Cascadeur can accurately recognize left and right bones and perform proper mirroring based on that. As we can see, the rigging process is now fully complete, and the character has successfully been imported into Cascadeur. Everything is set up just right, and now the model is fully ready for animation. I'm currently using the free version of Cascadeur. It's perfect for learning, but it has one limitation. It doesn't allow exporting animations. But don't worry, that's not the end of the road. There is a solution. In the next video, I'll show you how to work around this and export your animations successfully. So until the next video, take care of yourselves. If you learned something today, please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to like the video. Stay safe and know that I really appreciate you. See you soon.